I wish I were better prepared for this, but as usual, I just have a little window of time to talk to you guys, and I've been trying to create some demonstrations of pitching in recent days. I wanted to back those up with a discussion of the historical record that has given me a lot of my ideas. You know, I did this with hitting secrets from baseball's graveyard and, and with uh, landing safeties. Uh, I feel like my grasp of hitting has just grown immensely as I've dug into the historical record and looked at what old videos and pictures where I could find. Uh, but with pitching, I'm not a pitcher. I've never been a pitcher. I don't claim to have any special knowledge of pitching. So I'm just going at this as a historian to begin with. Although my son was a successful uh, D2 pitcher from using a lower arm angle, that was kind of, I guess, what got me interested in a lot of this stuff to begin with. But uh, from the hitting angle, I, I found that I got so many good ideas from looking into the ancient historical records that I would try to do the same thing with pitching, uh, even though I don't really, you know, it's just not something I can walk out in a field and start doing the way I do with hitting. But uh, here's a place where I thought this would be as good a place to start as any. I mean, Bill James, how do you do better than that? Uh, the Nair James Guide to Pitching. This is just an exhaustive index of like all the pitchers that have ever thrown in the big leagues, even for one or two pitches. And it gives you a little information about their, you know, give you their height and weight and what they threw. Uh, I made some notes here. I haven't gone very far through this yet, but I started making some notes about pitchers of uh, more diminutive height because that's what we do at small ball success. We, we look for uh, ways that guys with less height can perform effectively on a baseball field. It turns out that you know, I, I feel like this is kind of a dead end, but I did find some pitchers like Art Neff, five foot nine, uh, Dickie Kerr, five foot seven, uh, Willie Sherdell, five foot ten, Candy Cummings, five foot nine, uh, Billy Pierce. I remember Billy, kind of. I mean, not from seeing him on TV, but from my baseball collections. A great White Sox pitcher from the from the 50s, five foot ten, not too tall, uh, and Bobby Shantz too. I kind of remember the name. Bobby Shantz was only five foot six, the junk baller, and then there was Dolph Luque from farther back. He was five foot seven. Uh, these guys, besides being probably shorter than average, even even for back in the 1930s, uh, they appear from what I can make out to have been uh, guys who threw from a lower arm angle. And that's kind of the way at this point, the way that I'm coming at this question from small ball success, I'm thinking that for shorter guys who tend to have the broader frame the way I do and my son does, I think that using that broad frame to bring the ball to accelerate the ball this way uh, may be the course to a successful pitching career. And maybe these guys were doing that. I think the ones that I read off were, were doing it. Um, the Bill James Guide, Nyer and James, um, they it's kind, of, it's kind of just... It's frustrating because just when you start getting really interested in these characters, you, you don't have any more information. <laughs> you have some stuff that uh, sports writers of the time wrote about them. And of course, what are Nyer and James going to do except just reproduce what is being said by the people who were there on the ground? But that doesn't, for someone who's trying to do what I'm doing, give me the, the sort of information I'm really looking for. So I have lately gone to the strategy of trying to create a kind of a profile for pitchers who 
who use the motion that I'm looking into right now, I believe that uh, they would, the, the guys we're looking for uh, are going to be uh, probably photographed in baseball cards. I used lots of baseball cards when I was studying hitters, so I decided, well, let's try to do the same thing for pitchers. The, the favorite shots for shooting pitchers in baseball cards uh, are usually right after they've delivered the pitch. I'm seeing a lot of that. Uh, that's because basically there's no more fast motion that you can, you can, with a slower shutter speed, which you're going to have back in the 20s and 30s, uh, you can get that shot and it's not going to be blurred. If you try to shoot them while they're whipping their arm through, you're going to get a blurry shot. And that's the same reason why you can't get shots of hitters in old baseball cards when the bat is actually going to the ball. So that's frustrating in both cases. But I think for the pitchers, you know, this is... It's actually very good information because if you're throwing from a low arm angle, you're going to finish like this with your arm across your torso. Uh, and I, again, show you this at the table, but I've also found, well, I'm going to kind of show you, you know, your leg's going to be up like that to the side as opposed to coming more over the top, about 11 o'clock, your arm's going to be more up and down, and your back leg is just going to be, you know, pointing back towards second base. There's not going to be that uh, calf that's flopped out to the side. Now, I'll start with, these are old baseball cards that were apparently, these are reproductions. I'd be a millionaire if I actually owned the originals, but these are reproductions of... American Caramel Company cards, uh, they don't really have much on them except the character, the picture, and the name. But this is, I've heard of Bob Shockey, uh, pitched for the, the old Yankees. And you can see, <laughs> the glasses help me read things close up, but I can't see them at a distance. Uh, he's coming straight over the top, you know. His arm is finishing up and down, and you can see that his rear leg is pretty much just in a line with the home plate, the second base axis. And who's this? Uh, Wait Hoyt. I've heard of him too. Um, his arm is hanging down, and it, it kind of looks like his leg might be flopping out to the side, but this is a side angle shot. So I'm pretty confident that both of these guys are throwing for around 10, 30, or 11. Cards aren't going to stay up, but that's okay. i got to move fast here. Look at all these guys. Here's uh, George, Mo George Mogridge, Washington pitcher. See, there's the arm that's just crossing the torso now to the side. Now, he's just warming up and Walter Johnson looks like he's just warming up although they said Walter uh, threw so casually even though he's he was buzzing the ball in there at 90 plus but it would just look like he was warming up when he threw real pitches here's a uh, urban shocker great <laughs> great baseball name urban shocker and he's got the arm across the torso and you can see the legs sort of flopping out to the side here's another Brian Harris, no relation to me. Uh, here's a guy, Burt Cole. I almost hesitate to show this, but he's obviously just warming up. But then, you know, why would you, as a pitcher, why would you even warm up? I could understand if you were a middle infielder. You'd be kind of maybe flicking the ball from the side uh, to get loose. But why would a pitcher, even in the process of warming up, drop down to do that if it's not something that he actually does with his uh, regular pitching. Now there's a good shot of somebody, Howard Emke. I have heard of him too. This is from the 30s. Uh, he had a couple of really good years. You can see his leg way out to the side. Uh, Elmer Myers. I'm really running out of time here, but there's just there's so many of these guys. Clarence 
Shovel Hodge. I don't know why they called him Shovel. And this is Ben Carr. It just, you know, it's the same shot over and over again. You get those arms that are uh, crossing the torso. So you know that these guys were throwing from a low arm angle and really not stacking the deck here, guys. I mean, I found, I started out with two cards of guys who were finishing with a sort of over-the-top delivery, and I've got how many here? Or like a dozen of guys from the 20s and 30s who were throwing from down here. That's simply what I found in digging through this collection of reproductions. It's, it's like a, you know, a one to six ratio of guys throwing from here as opposed to throwing from down here. So it appears that uh, in earlier baseball, when, almost a century ago, this was the preferred angle. Uh, guys were a, a little bit shorter on the average, but they were certainly throwing more frequently in terms of starts, and they were throwing more innings. And uh, gosh, how could that have been damaging, particularly damaging to the arm if they could have ground out all the innings that they did? So, uh, and I'm going to operate, at least for the next few weeks or months, until I see evidence to the contrary, on the assumption that uh, this is the key to figuring out what guys used to do. And in small ball success, as we try to look in farther to pitching, this is the style that I'm going to try to replicate. So stay tuned.